Birch Trees on Snow in Autumn by Martin Kelly. First off, take a pencil and draw the basic elements as in the hill and the trees in the distance and of course the birch tree trunks. Take a sharpened candle or similar and in the under parts of the trees on the hill make some small marks which hopefully will work as a wax resist and it'll be light hitting. Then take some masking fluid and using the end of a brush or a piece of wood or stick put the masking fluid on. It's poisonous, it's ammonia based so don't drink it or anything like that. Turn the paper around if you need to so as to access certain lines more easily like the hill. It should take about 15 to 20 minutes if it's not particularly warm to dry. Anyway, then approach the sky from above with the blue scumble it in and scumble off and add and stipple in where necessary to make intenser areas. In a similar manner, you can take some cadmium yellow and some lemon yellow on a soft round brush and scumble that in, starting from the lower areas of the trees on the hill, pushing it out towards the tops where the light's hitting them. Be careful you don't make the mistake I'm about to here, where I put too much in that left hand area and forget to push it out with a damp brush. Let it dry and then wet it again when it's totally dry. So now you can put some of the warmer colours in and they'll diffuse out over the yellows dibbling and dabbling. It's technical. Let it soften off, soften some of the edges, add and then think about getting a stronger red or reds. That's looking a bit insipid at the moment. Yeah, so stipple in some more intense reds. Give it a bit of life, a bit of oomph. Now mix up some of those reds and the burnt umber, the darkest of the browns. Sort of half mixed on your brush, fairly dry-ish. Scratch out some of the tops where it was too dense. And then add some greens. This is after you've added those shadows we looked at. Also, you've scratched out some of those marks you made with the candle. Or we will do. We're mixing up two dark colours here. One based on the Viridian Green and the Burnt Umber and one based on the Blues and the Viridian Green and the Payne's Grey. And we're going to, using two brushes with colour on, we're going to apply those and alternate them around the bottom of those trees. And we're going to have a third brush, which is just a damp, scuffy brush to soften some of the tops of those dark areas. See, at this point, you can see that the wax resist is too dramatic and we're going to have to scratch off some of that soon. But for now, let's soften the edges of this darkness under the trees. It's too dark. We've scratched off some of the white. We're going to add some water to it and take some tissue paper. Let the water sink in and then dab away. It was just all a bit too dark and intense. It would have been better if I'd put it on as a thinner puddly wash. Right, we've got a problem from the top left with the skies. We take a damp brush fairly stiff round and we stab into the edges of those blues gently but we'll get rid of that nasty shape and then we can start to when all the paint's dry to roll off the masking fluid careful going down the trunks so that we don't tear any edges this has been on for about a day or two days at that point erase any pencil lines that are annoying and in that left hand tree we notice that there's too much blue in the upper end of it so 
we're going to take a damp brush fairly stiff round and we're just going to work against that blue and try and lessen it so we've got more of a trunk okay we're going to scratch off a bit more of the tops of those trees because they're all a bit dense and some of the pencil marks were under the paint and we couldn't erase them well i couldn't so this gets rid of them now we're going to scratch in with a, that was with a craft knife this is with a craft knife we're going to scratch in some lines and scratch away some branches appertaining to the birch trees mixing up another dark color and blading the brush the idea is we're going to put some branches in coming off the birch trees and we're going to make some marks on the trunks so when we're making marks on the trunks we're holding the brush parallel almost to the paper the paint is fairly dry on the brush and we're catching the tooth of the paper to make what you might call birch tree type marks Some of these might be too distinct and you'll take a brush and maybe soften the edges. This is trying to demonstrate how the brush is parallel to the paper. Let's mix up another colour. We're blading the brush there, so it's sharp. See how the sharpness by turning it over once and then turning it back again and pressing down, which allows us to paint finer lines. The same works for a rigger. If you blade it, you can make a fire here, like here, you can make a finer line, pulling away and upwards from the root of the branch and up like an aeroplane taking off so that the end is nice and thin. I'm going to add a little bit of water and some brown to that colour and make the dried up grass that comes out of the snow. And then we need to think about where the sunlight is. It's somewhere above our right hand shoulder. We need to indicate that by mixing up a dirty lavender to paint onto the left hand side of the birch tree trunks. But the edge is too hard on the right. So we take a second brush, a damp brush, and very gently run that brush up along the right hand edge of the paint we've just put on. We don't want to activate any of the colors underneath, so be gentle. Just tickling along, getting thinner towards the top, remember, and big it up near the base. Trees cast shadows, so we'll take some of that dirty lavender and remember the snow is coming and going. It's not superbly smooth, so you can be fairly coming and going with the paint. That was too much there, that needs to be dealt with. Thank you for watching.